Quantum Immortality I believe I was 15 when I came up with my own non-scientific theory regarding death. I knew that I could not recall anything before my birth, nor most things after. My earliest memories became vivid near the ages of 6 through 8. Not that it matters, but definitely worth noting for my personal knowledge. All I wanted to explain from my examples is that I only know what it is to be alive and cannot conceive to the slightest of what it's like to not. My theory went something like this. What if you already died? What if when you had a near-death experience, it actually killed you, and what lives on is your soul playing along as if you hadn't succumbed to death? What if we are all immortal, but every time we die, we branch off into another dimension in which we are not dead? But in the past dimension, we do pass, and our families mourn, and friends remember. I always had this thought in the back of my head, but couldn't compose the words descriptively enough to find a result on Google. Until last week, I somehow managed to describe my thoughts clear enough to find a result on Reddit. Another user described the exact same story I put forth. This both excited and frightened my inner being. He too did not know where this thought came from, until a comment replying to him said that he was describing the theory of quantum immortality. Quantum immortality is a theory of the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics. Quantum immortality is a thought experiment that puts forth a scenario in which you as a person survive definite quantum suicide. Here's an example. Let's say you get into a box with a gun pointed at your dome. Somehow the trigger measures the spin value of a proton every two seconds. If it spins one direction, it does nothing. If it spins the opposite direction, the trigger is pulled and you die. The proton gives you a 50% chance of living, making it as random as it could be. Now stay in the box until 200 seconds have gone by, the trigger being pulled 100 times. Your chances of random survival have plummeted to 0.00%, reassuring that you are indeed immortal. Every time you could have died, the world split into two dimensions, one where you face your demise and the other where you lived. Either way, the only one you could have experienced was the one where you lived, where your consciousness was existing because you cannot know that you died, making you immortal, sort of. Hugh Everett, the father of the many worlds interpretation, believed in the concept religiously. Chain smoking, heavy drinking, and no exercise sadly led to his death at 51 years old. But he was happy with the life he lived and died satisfied, or as he believed, he simply split off into another branch of existence. But what if you don't die in that box? and get hurt instead. Let's say the bullet gets stuck in your head and you get a botched surgery as doctors take the bullet fragments out of your brain, leaving you as a quadriplegic. This is a valid universe. Or let's say you get into a car accident that leaves you brain dead. You are still alive but in a vegetative state and are in constant pain, but you cannot scream, ask for help or cry, leaving you in a long eternal seeming torture. No matter how painful and torturous your life becomes, Quantum immortality does not protect you from these scenarios, but may in fact bring upon a personal hell that even suicide won't bring an end to. Is there an end to quantum immortality? The interesting factor of quantum immortality is that it does not end the effects of aging and the problems congruent to it. So when you're 90 and one of your major organs begins to fail, causing you to die, reality branches off into another existence where you survive. Your consciousness would exist in a perpetual state of being about to die. A never-ending saga of you on your deathbed because you can only experience your living self thank you red cool it come on baby head man in charge right put the gun down all right we'll believe you